right so next let's move to the next problem which is this one okay what does it say it says find the inverse Fourier transform of these signals okay we have to find the inverse Fourier transform of these signals so first signal uh, our first function x1 of g omega is given to be 2 pi delta of omega plus pi delta of omega minus 2 plus pi delta of omega plus 2 so definitely what will be our x1 of tr this is a direct question so this should be equal to which signal will have 2 pi delta of omega that is 1 we have already seen this and which property is involved this is shifting in frequency domain so which signal will have pi delta of omega minus 2 okay we, I, I'll write down that here. So if you remember e power j 2t correct. So this flow will have 2 pi delta of omega minus 2 but we have pi here and hence we should divide by 2. So 1 by 2 e power j 2t will have pi delta of omega minus 2 with the same argument second fellow will have 1 by 2 e power minus j 2t as the inverse Fourier transform. So you can simplify and see that this is nothing but 1 plus cos 2t. So that is the Fourier, uh, the signal x1 of t which will have x1 of j omega as the Fourier transform. Okay, right. So next second example is this. So what is that? You have to find x of x2 of t whose Fourier transform is as given below. Okay. So if you look at this a little bit carefully, magnitude is given, angle is given. So we can write down our x2 of j omega as what? This is nothing but modulus of x2 of j omega multiplied with e power j angle of x2 of j omega this is the polar form of the fourier transform right so but if you look at this x modulus of x2 of j omega carefully how what is that here that is u of omega plus 2 minus u of omega minus 2 so that is nothing but a rectangular function from where to where okay from minus 2 to plus 2 i will draw the plot only modulus okay Yes, so modulus of x3 of j omega would look like this, right? So that should be a rectangle from minus 2 to plus 2 with amplitude 1. Okay, yes, so th this is nothing but rect of omega by 4, correct? So modulus of, sorry, this is x2, right? Yes, modulus of x2 of j omega is nothing but rect of omega by 4 multiplied with e power j minus 3 by 2 omega plus pi okay so again this should be equal to c this uh, e power j times minus 3 by 2 omega plus pi we will split the exponential term we get e power j pi which is equal to minus 1 so i'll di directly write it as minus rect of omega by 4 multiplied with e power minus j3 omega by 2 okay yes so now let us try to find out what is x2 of t correct that is a question so this implies what is x2 of t okay yes so what will be our x2 of t here yes so yes so what will be our x2 of t so x2 of t is inverse Fourier transform of this function. So we know the, the minus is there, we'll keep minus. So which signal will have rect of omega by 2 as the Fourier transform? That fellow will have sine 2t by pi t as the Fourier transform or inverse Fourier transform. So sine 2t by pi t will have a rectangular function. Um, from minus 2 to plus 2 with amplitude 1 which is nothing but rect of omega by 4 note that here these two Fourier transforms are getting multiplied so what should happen in time domain we should convolve but which signal will have e power minus j3 omega by 2 as a Fourier transform delta of t minus 3 by 2 correct so delta of t minus 3 by 2 will have e power minus j3 omega by 2 as the Fourier transform but here any function convolved with shifted Dirac delta function what will happen the whole function will shift 
by two units to the right. So this should be minus of ah. Uh, what do you get? Sine time sine of two times instead of t we have to replace with t minus three by two whole divided by pi times t minus. 3 by 2. So that would be the final signal which will have the above x2 of j omega as the Fourier transform. Okay, right. So next as a third example, let us take x of j omega, x3 of j omega to be cos 2 omega multiplied with cos omega. So clearly we can write this as what here? 1 by 2. This is looking like cos a cos b which is nothing but 1 by 2 times cos of a plus b which is cos 3 omega plus 1 by 2 times cos of a minus b which is cos omega. Okay, so let us expand this. So you will get 1 by 2 multiplied with. So this fellow again can be written as 1 by 2 e power minus j3 omega plus 1 by 2 e power plus j3 omega plus Ah, this flow is 1 by 2 e power minus j omega plus 1 by 2 e power plus j omega. So we already know which signals will have this as the Fourier transform and hence what will be our final x3 of t here. So 1 by 2 is common throughout. We let us bring that out. So you will get 1 by 4 multiplied with ah, which signal will have e power minus j3 omega as a Fourier transform delta of t minus 3 and which signal will have e power j3 omega as the Fourier transform delta of t plus 3 plus this fellow with the same argument we get delta of t minus 2 plus delta of t plus t minus 1 plus delta of t plus 1. So that would be the Fourier uh, the signal x3 of t which will have x3 of j omega as the Fourier transform. Okay.